This is the Just Because Buzz, Thread Tales number 14. I'm Merritt Crawford, and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm also known as So Just Because on Instagram if you'd like to check out my photos there. I want to thank you so much for joining me, and I want to especially thank Kim the Contented Stitcher and Rachel Q Stitches for giving me shout outs on their latest floss tubes. That is so kind of both of you, and I really appreciate it. It's fun to get to know these stitchers through this um, medium, and they are just two of the nicest gals you'll ever want to meet virtually, <laughs> and I'm sure in person. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And go check their videos out if you haven't. They do wonderful work. I want to thank all my new subscribers. The last time we met, I was doing a giveaway for my 200 and 300 milestones. Well, I've already passed 400, so when we reach 500, we're going to do another fun giveaway, and likely it'll be something that I have made. So uh, I look forward to that. Hopefully it would be by my next video. So thank you so much for coming over and visiting and subscribing and liking. And if this is your first time, I hope you will do the same. Sub subscribe and like and uh, just sit back and enjoy. So I have some news I want to share first. Um, Kathleen over at Situation Normal is a friend from uh, Floss Tube, and she lives in Canada. And we have struck up a friendship because we started Floss Tubes about the same time and just um, enjoy some of the same stitching styles. So we decided that we would like to do a strawberry sow. So you would stitch anything with strawberries on it. And we're gonna start the first day of spring, which happens to be March 20th. So I hope you all will be going through your charts and seeing if you have anything with strawberries on it. I did note that there are some designers that are designing spring things right now and releasing those spring things. And there are some strawberry charts out there, some new ones. Kathleen is gonna be stitching Strawberry Fields Forever by Blackbird Designs. And I have decided to stitch also another Blackbird design, Agnes Platt Strawberry Sampler. It has a big bee skip on it and it has a red house. Uh, I love red and bees are my thing. So uh, I hope you'll join us. We will talk more about it, but it's gonna be, uh, we'll put a hashtag with it and it's gonna be something that we could follow on Instagram or you could follow through the floss tube and just something to enjoy. There's no rules or anything. We're just going to have fun with it and just enjoy all the strawberry charts that we can um, see. So that's one thing. Um, another thing is I wanted to give you a sneak peek of my antique sampler. Back in September, when everybody was stitching on their sampler September stitches, I happened to purchase an antique sampler. And, um, and with plans to reproduce it and have gotten quite a bit of um, advice from folks and I really appreciate that. And I've started to do some of the charting and I just wanted to share a little sneak peek with you and uh, let you see what it looks like. I'm just gonna do part of the, the sampler. This is some acid-free paper that I have over it and keep it stored. But I've started to chart the little church, and I've already charted the iris. So uh, I'm going to show you a little sneak peek of the iris. But you can I want to show you something here. See the colors? You know, they, you know with these antique samplers, they tend to fade. So that's the front of it. And I want to show you the back of it real quick. And look at the difference. Quite a difference in the coloring, huh? So, like I said, I've already started to chart it and carefully lay it over here for now. So I have a couple of pieces that I'm working on and just um, working on some ideas for it. So, charted and some of the motifs, working with the colors. So just kind of share that with you. That's something that I'm working on, I'm excited about, and 
the thing that really drew me to that particular sampler was the church. And um, I really thought that was a neat motif. I haven't seen that on many samplers and can't seem to find many that have it. Um, it's believed to be a European sampler. Uh, it does have a name on it. The first name I can't make out. The last name I believe I can make out, so I'm working on that. It does have a marking on it um, of souvenir, and it put a year. And the lady that was really helping me with uh, research on this uh, doesn't seem to think that the date and the word souvenir uh, as when it was starting to appear on samplers jobs. So that's okay. We're, we're just going to work through it and we'll see where it leads me. Um, I um, have been watching other floss tubers who also do antique reproductions and learning about how they approach um, some of their samplers whether they change colors or not, or whether they, they try to stay true. And so this is a big learning process, but I am enjoying it. And that brought me to uh, another piece of news as I um, purchased Mac Stitch yesterday and started working in it because um, I had shared with you all a while back my little pieces back here over my shoulder that are uh, cross stitch pieces that I found at an antique mall in Finley, Ohio. And I've restitched uh, one of them in a variegated floss. And this one I was able to put in Mac Stitch yesterday. And so I'm playing around with that and hope to be able to share it with you all soon so that if you wanted to chart it or excuse me, stitch it, you could. And this is uh, color and cotton and it's Carolina blue. So this is coming and I just wanted to share that with you that I am working on it. And hopefully you'll get to stitch it soon if you want to. Right, so I'm gonna go back to, I haven't done news before, I don't think, so uh, that was kind of a new segment for me. So I'm going to now start with what I typically start with in my videos, and that is an old FFO. And this is going to be um, about 24 years ago, because this is my daughter's birth sampler and her quilt, and she'll be 24 in June this year. And I wanted to share this because these are kind of springy looking. Um, if you like Beatrix Potter, she, this was her nursery theme. Uh, I even had an artist come in and paint kind of life-size Beatrix Potter figures around her room. And I just loved it. I thought it was so pretty. And so um, the cross-stitch piece that I'm going to show you, actually there's two pieces. I did her birth sampler and then I did blocks for a quilt and my mom helped me put the quilt together. She actually did the quilt part and the quilting and the finishing of the quilt. I just did the stitching. So I'm gonna share these two pieces with you. Uh, first I'll show you the chart too, so in case. So there is a Beatrix Potter birth sampler one and you notice it's in blue. This is the one I actually stitched but I changed it to the pink and then this is the Beatrix Potter too that's in the pink. So these, and actually, <laughs> I guess I didn't realize, I don't know if both samplers are on here or not. No, I guess not, okay. So anyway, um, so here is the sampler. I do have her name covered up and the date just to protect her. But um, these are the little motifs, just so cute. I just thought they were so pretty. And the coloring was just so pretty. And it's, it just reminds me of spring. So you um, put their name and their date and then you can put their weight in ounces. So that was her first sampler. And then the quilt that we made, I used some of the same motifs. And so I'll stand up so you can see this. So there's the top two. 
and then to the next. So there's just four cross-stitched blocks. And I can get them closer. There's Tom Kitten and Peter Rabbit. And then there's Tiggy Winkle. And then two bad mice. Although there's just one there right now. <laughs> but you can see my mom's quilting and the pretty lace. Just beautiful quilt. Just a treasure. <clears throat> so, and then I have another spring book by Beatrix Potter. It has some of the same characters. So, fun memory of making those. Thanks, Mom, for helping me. All right, I have some new FFOs. So if you follow me on Instagram, you saw this already, but hopefully you'll enjoy seeing it again. The first one is Winter Wishes, and it is a Lizzie Kate design, and I really enjoyed it. I did put it on a 25 count Wedgwood Lugana, and this is it. I already had the frame, so I uh, mitered the corners on my piece, and I didn't glue it in, it's um, just the mitering with the stitching on the corners and then it was able to go in the back of the frame that way. And then I just did two simple bows. It does have a charm on it and the chart that I have found was at an estate sale and the charm was already gone but I was able to find uh, the charm on eBay and I bought two so that um, Louise could stitch this and have her charm too, and she's in the process of stitching it. So, Winter Wishes. And I finished this in the middle of all this big snowstorm that we had in mid-February, and my Winter Wishes had turned to Winter Prayers for those folks. So, hoping that by now things are better. I know they're melted, but it doesn't necessarily mean that some of the damage that they're still having to deal with. So, but I enjoyed this very much. And then the next FFO is also a Lizzie Kate and it was a free pattern. And my friend Louise, again, she wanted to stitch this. And I suggested we change the free pattern um, because I like bees to um, do a little play on words and I'm in the process it's almost finished so I'm going to still show it as a finish but I'm working on my cording technique thanks to Miss Vaughna um, I'm, I'm challenged a little bit with cording I don't know why but I'm, I'm getting there so I'm gonna probably use this cording on it but I did make it into a flat fold so I we added the E, an extra E, so we have bees, and then it didn't come with bees on it, um, nor did it come with a bee skep. I, it has a little house here, uh, and like I said, this is a free chart. <clears throat> so I added a bee skep, and I added three little bees, and then we added the extra E. Pretty much everything else is about the same. So, so I've got to... Uh, glue my cording down and um, I'll show you the rest of the piece so this is the fabric I chose got a mustache has a little ribbon so this was fun to make still working on it Vana's tutorials are so helpful and she is such a treasure to the stitching community to even share those and that uh, you can watch them and stop them and I mean what a gift that is and um, Vana, thank you so much. All right, so I have some other finishes that I'm excited to share with you. The first one is one that I've mentioned before. A friend of mine, Sandy Fico, gave me this um, stitch. Uh, she has since passed, but she had stitched most of it, and I needed to finish the bees. 
on this stitch and I'll show you the pattern. It's from Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine. It's the cover chart and it does have a proverb on it and the proverb reads, pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body, Proverbs 16:24. <clears throat> And I noticed when I, I had mentioned this this before, I noticed when I went to try to finish the bees that Sandy had either by choice or the accidentally stitched some of the back stitching in the wrong color. And she may have decided that was her choice to do it in the wrong color. Um, some of the back stitching for the bee is supposed to be in, done in a um, blue. And it looked to me that she had started doing the back stitch in the 3371 for all of the back stitching, except for the wings. It does have a blue in that wing. And so I kept going with what she had started. Um, since I only had about four bees to complete, um, I decided to go ahead and do how, finish it how she had done it rather than take it out. Uh, I just think it's a gorgeous sampler and it is such a gift. I, um, for her to have given it to me is just incredible uh, kindness and I'll forever treasure it. It's going to be the beginning of my bee wall. So, what a treasure. I would like to have it professionally framed, however, there's not much on the edge here. There's, there's less than two inches. So I am concerned if a professional would even want to fool with it. And I'm having trouble getting some of these wrinkles out, even though I tried to press it. Um, I'm considering, because it's all DMC and um, anchor threads, I think, I'm considering washing it in a, a gentle soap that um, has been recommended. So we'll see. I'm just really concerned about there's not there's not the usual margin margin that professional framers really like to have that two to three inch margin and. Um, so I'll have to ask some questions and see if, if they want to do it or not. Alright, some other finishes that I have would be the February sampler for Country Cottage Needleworks. So I enjoyed finishing this. And I wanted to show you my finishing idea. I haven't gotten the first one done yet, but just want to show you this is a cookbook stand that I already had so I was thinking about doing these on the cookbook stand and of course most of this fabric will be cut away but I would do something like this and probably put some kind of little greenery that I can change out for each one there so if you fold this down and maybe you can imagine that so that's my plan for that I wanted to share that I've been meaning to bring it upstairs so you can see it and I just kept forgetting <clears throat> and then another finish that I had was now I know my ABC's this is a free chart from Blackbird Designs and this is my first red sampler and it's just on a scrap piece of linen and I use the Wildflowers by Caron, and it's the color Flame. And this was from my friend Sandy's stash. She had given this to me, so it was fun to be able to use something that she had given me. So this was a very fun stitch. My friend Louise wanted to stitch this, and so I had some time last Friday night, and I finished it on Saturday I think so it's a quick stitch it's fun and with just one thread then it makes it that much easier you're not having to switch threads so another one thing I wanted to show you this is not my finish but it is a finish by a friend and she was looking for someone in her area to help finish something for her and I reached out to her and said I would be willing to help um I am considering trying a finishing service 
So um, she was very kind and said, yeah, why don't we try that? So she is going to let me finish her piece. And this is her piece. And I haven't pressed it yet. So it's still got some wrinkles I'll have to get out. So it's kind of a long piece and that's what we've, I've had this for a while and we were trying to figure out how best to finish it. And I did find this piece at Hobby Lobby the other day. And uh, we're gonna, we're me, we're gonna work on trying to finish it with this. And I'm hoping to make it where she could interchange it if she wanted to. She did another string. This is a Bent Creek, I believe, pattern. And she could do another string and then maybe, you know, interchange it. And if we did some greenery on top or something, again, she could interchange and do seasonal. So I'm excited to do this for her and get it to her soon because she's she's been very patient and we've just been trying to find the right piece to finish it on so that's that's gonna be fun to start working on all right let's see how we are okay whips wet whips so my my favorite whip probably although I like them all my favorite whip right now is winds of autumn so working on mighty acorn in the new book winds of autumn and it's this piece right here and I think you'll see some noticeable progress when I hold it up. So last time when I was visiting with you, um, I think I had gotten all the words in and maybe started on the tree and some of the branches. So I've done all the motifs down this side. I did add 2020 because this is when we moved in this house and the house is going to look like the similar color to the house we're living in now. And I raked all those leaves and the first time in 2020. So that's why I decided to go ahead and put the 2020 on there. Um, we've got this little guy sitting on the roof with sunflower. There's a vine that goes down here. I've started on the house and I've got the roof in so I'm loving the stitch the house original color is called Schneckly uh, let's see it's this color here which is a beautiful color but I am doing the old money by classic color works to look like my house and so far I really like it so this is Mighty Acorn out of the new Winds of Autumn Blackbird Design book okay the next one is Giving Thanks also a Blackbird Design and this is one that I've been stitching in the mornings when I can sit up here by some natural light. And it really has helped. It's made a difference because it is on a black piece of fabric. I'll show you my progress here. And I have made some progress since we last visited. Um, I'm getting over here in this vine and down here on some of these leaves. So it's not a lot of progress. But I'm getting there, and I'm, I'm not in a huge hurry since it's not real close to fall. we got a, got a little ways. But. All right. So on Cardinal Wreath, this is one of my whips, and I had talked about it last time because, or actually the time before last, but I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it because I noticed that I had been using the instructions from the Mill Hill kit. This is the kit. And the instructions are intended to be followed using perforated paper. And I had switched to a linen. And 
was using the three threads and some of the two threads and uh, it's, it was so tight. And what I've decided is I may take this part out, but this is the only part I'll take out. And then the rest of it, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to just, I'm going to leave it as texture, so to speak. And now I'm going to stitch um, two threads only, no three threads, and just finish it out. I don't want to rip it out. I just think it would, it, I could possibly damage the linen and I, I didn't want to do that. And I thought, well, that the threads that are three, um, that are kind of thick right now, it's just going to add texture if I just leave it in and just kind of, so I'm this far into it. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, we'll see how it turns out. Like I said, the only thing I may rip out is this part right here. And I'm a little concerned about even doing that because it's been in there so long. And if I take it out, will the, will the threads go back? I'm, I mean, I'm sure it will, but anyway, I'm just, that's kind of what I've decided to do. That's a lot of ripping out. I already have some of it beaded, so I think I'm going to do that. I don't have any updates on my ABC sampler. I'm still waiting on treasures from Mill Hill and Craft Gallery has ordered them and I'll just have to check with them and see if anything has come in yet. So I don't have an update on it yet. And then my last whip right now is the Country Cottage Needleworks March sampler. And this is the little leprechauns and the rainbows and very cute. So I've got a good start on it. So I've got the middle portion done and then it's got three rows, top and bottom. So it's very cute. These are fun to do. It's going to be fun to figure out the fabric for those too. So. All right, I have some stitchy kindness. I entered a contest on Instagram and won. And it was by My So Quilty Life. And I'll show it to you. It's so cute. Maybe you could go check her out. She's got new um, patterns coming out. But the pattern that I won is this one. And it's called Hearts Crossing. Isn't it a pretty pattern? And then it came with this little love. 10. Very cute. It has X's and O's around it. Cute. And then it came with this adorable fabric palette. Weren't those beautiful? So I'm excited. This was fun. Um, beautiful fabrics. I believe they're Moda by um, Bonnie and Camille. So exciting to received that. That was very sweet. And I, the quilter that designed the pattern and get, did the giveaway, like I said, it's My So Quilty Life. I'll link her below. And her name is Heather. And Heather, thank you so much. All right. So last time on my uh, Thread Tales, I discussed wanting to do a chenille rug and using Llama Love by Deb Strain the panel that went with that fabric collection and I had bought four of those panels and finally got together um, got it all sandwiched and pinned and stitched and um, I showed it on my Instagram some of the progression photos if you want to go back and look at that so um, but I have to finish here so. this is Llama Love Chenille Rug <laughs> it was a lot of fun. You can see the chenille up close. I did notice, let's see. So over here, you know, you can still see those words pretty good. But over here, I got a little, um, I don't know what you would say, but you can't read them as well. So that is a consideration if you decide you want to do this. The llamas still look really good. 
but if you decide you want to do a chenille rug, they're super easy. But consider um, lettering, it, you know, because by the time you cut it, um, you may lose your lettering. I wanted to say the word muddy, like it, it just kind of scrambled it a little bit. Um, but if you have a large floral that's got a repeat or some other large design with a repeat, um, you may not have that problem. It would, it would be easier to um, still see the design. But lettering and words, uh, maybe not so much, just depending. Uh, I'm still pleased with it. I think it'll be fun to put out next year for Valentine's. Um, not sure where I'm going to put it so that muddy feet and paws don't walk over it. So it might be a bedside uh, little rug instead of on the floor in the kitchen or something like that. <clears throat> so that was fun to finish. Uh, I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, then I also made a pincushion using my milk glass. And I'm going to insert a photo here. Um, I'll show you. Uh, what I'm talking about. I had done one of these and showed it on my Instagram um, a while back. And then a friend of mine was very interested in one. And so I made one for her and um, she received it early last week. And so, or late last week, I guess I should say. And um, she was very excited about it. And she put her scissors in it. And then she said she put lollipops in it or show, showed me a picture. It had lollipops in it, Tootsie Roll Pops, because they're a staple in her sewing room. So I thought that was very cute. So haul, I'm going to share some haul with you. All right, so just picked up some random DMC flosses just to use, um, depending on what projects are coming along. And then I found some fabrics, cute little shamrock fabric. And I love this bee fabric. Isn't that cute? Loved that. Both of these were uh, found at Joann's. And then I went to my first kind of a quilt guild um, show and tell, just a little get together. It's not really sponsored by our, our guild. Um, it's just a way to get together and visit with folks between meetings while they can't or we can't meet in person right now. And we met at the Bowling Green um, Mall. And before we met we actually went to a big fab lab which is a company or 16,000 square foot little business not real little but you know what I mean family-owned business and you can do anything from pottery to quilting to 3d imprinting um, photography all kinds of stuff that they can do in this space so we got a demonstration as quilters that came that night for their gamble long arm machine. And you can take lessons and then you can come in and once you uh, have taken your lessons and feel comfortable, you can come in and rent the machine. Uh, and there's a membership. So anyway, I enjoyed that, that was fun. And then afterwards we did our show and tell. We go out in the food court and visit, sit in a circle and just visit. And um, we have to wear a mask and that kind of thing, but you can at least sit and visit and then there's restrooms so that if people need to go to the restroom, they could. So we did show and tell. And then one of the ladies had a piece of Japanese silk that she had done or used in a uh, little table topper. And it was so pretty. And she offered if anybody wanted a piece. And I took a piece from her, uh, as did some of the other ladies. And it's this beautiful butterfly piece. And stamped on it, it says um, December... 14, 1955, but it was inspected supposedly in Japan, and it's a piece of Japanese silk. So that will be fun. Be a fun finishing piece. Very, very pretty. And then some other haul. I did go to an estate sale this past week, and it was a little disappointing. Um, one. They had said they had moved it to a warehouse uh, because the estate was so large that they did it. They were going to do phase one in a warehouse. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, so it's going to be a bigger space. Well, it wasn't. Um, they did drop walls and drop lighting and they staged everything, but they were only letting 15 people in at a time, which I appreciate. I think that's wise, but they didn't let people know that up front 
on the website. Usually they'll tell you, okay, this home is small or this is a condo and we'll only let 10, we'll only let 15 people in at a time. So we waited a good long while to get in and the prices were very high. Um, there were a lot of sewing notions. Um, there were lots of quilts. Um, so I enjoyed looking at those things, but um, very, very high end expensive. Uh, the only thing that I came across that I could afford was this little, it was on a $2 table. Anything on the table was $2. And it was this little uh, Apple pin cushion. It um, has a, a backing. and looks like something was here. I don't know what that was, if it was a pin or, because it's got little feet on it. So I'm not really sure what this part was. It's not there anymore. But this is like a piece of velveteen. I just thought it was kind of interesting. And so I purchased that. <clears throat> and then another thing that I found was this book at a retail shop. The little, um, habit, not habitat, um, for the animals, um, humane society retail shop. And they spell tail. Uh, T-A-I-L. So um, I found this book for 50 cents. So it's got all kinds of embroidery stitches and it has great illustrations. So that was a sweet find. And then of course I've made a trip to Hobby Lobby. That's I think the, the little DMC haul and then found some little carrots for decorating for spring. So that was fun. So my recipe for today is an easy Chinese orange bead, and it is at salusalo.com, and I will link it below, and I think you will enjoy it a whole lot. I can hear an air airplane going over, and you probably can too, but we're in the flight path of the training facility and the Toledo airport. So, anyway, and then my encouraging word, I wanted to end today with that encouraging word like I usually do. And so, last year at this time, we were getting ready to transition to Northwest Ohio. So I went back and looked at my journal to see if I had written anything for this day. I don't write every day in my journals, but decided to go back and look. And we had, by the now, had put an offer on a house not far from where we live now. And we're very excited about it. It's about 12 acres, it was a beautiful home. There had been a lot of upgrades and um, remodeling. Uh, there were some outbuildings. There was property. Um, so anyway, we were, we were pretty excited about it. And when we went to do the inspection, the results came back that there were five sump pumps in the crawl space. And we walked away. And we had to start over. And by now... I'm pretty sure we had a contract on our house and we're getting close to closing and having to figure out what we're going to do with our household goods while we figure out where we're going to live. My husband was in a townhouse, but there was no way we could um, transition to a townhouse with a great Pyrenees and two cats and no animals allowed kind of situation. So, um, we find out this news the very next uh, weekend. Um, my daughter and I travel up here to look at homes. And we find another home. And we made an offer, and they countered, and we accepted. And then a higher offer came in, and we lost that home, too. So it's Sunday morning, and we're kind of reeling. We're trying to figure this out. And I found two more homes to look at on the same street. And we look at one and, you know, it's okay. There's some issues, but, you know, it could work. And then we looked at this one that we're in now. And it, it seemed like it was the one. And as it turned out, um, the folks that were living in it, um, after Scott spoke with them and had um, the inspection and such, told them our situation, 
and the husband asked his wife if they could potentially be out so that we could go door to door with our goods. And she's like, yeah, we can make that happen. I mean, that's just such an act of kindness and grace. And we are so thankful. And the verse that came to mind when I was thinking on this is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths and he will make your path straight. And when we trust in our own understanding, you know, we, we can't make sense of it. But if we trust in the Lord, then we know that he's, he's got our best in mind. And he protected us from major issues that could have come from getting that first house. And, you know, so thankful. And disappointment was at first and you have to start over and you know look again uh, some of you have probably been there but trusting the Lord and knowing that he has my best always gives me that comfort so I hope it'll give you comfort too as well uh, we love our home we love where we are um, just this past Friday a couple packages came for the previous owner so my husband texted the husband and they came by and we got to visit with them and they're just such a neat couple and they actually helped us with another problem that we were um, trying to figure out with our heating system and that was no coincidence that her packages came here we were able to figure out a major issue um, that wasn't their fault it, it was just something we hadn't been able to figure out regarding our heating and so Trusting the Lord, I just can't stress it enough. Um, he is good all the time and can be trusted. I hope you have a great, great week. And thank you again for joining me. Take care. Enjoy every stitch. And so just because.